Hello and welcome to episode three of Kitchen Princess Academy, where I am going to be taking you through books four and five of the only good book series ever written. Before we jump in, I just want to give you guys fair warning that this is really where shit gets real. This is where the story picks up. This is where we're going to separate the girls from the women, okay? This is not for the faint of heart. But before we get to the exciting stuff, we have to talk through some of the most infuriating love triangle bullshit in written history. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to what I like to call the Watch Saga. So right at the end of book three, Najika finds out that Sora is going to be flying out to Paris that afternoon for a piano contest. And she of course gets all in her feelings like, wow, he's this busy and important and yet he took the time to fly to Hokkaido with me. He didn't have to do that. Wow, he's such a nice guy. So she goes to the Fujita diner to make him a going away treat and like, you know, maybe closing the diner was a good idea after all. She catches Sora before he goes away to give him his treat. And of course, instead of saying something normal like, oh, thank you, Najika, this means a lot. Sora has to go and say, Najika, when I get back from Paris, I have something I need to talk to you about. So Daichi notices that Najika's watch is broken and she's like, yeah, I know, but it still works. So I'm going to keep wearing it. And Daichi's like, just buy a new one. Um, newsflash Daichi, not all of our dads are fucking millionaires. So this is where the watch saga officially starts. It's just a Rube Goldberg machine of miscommunication. Daichi buys Najika a watch, not because he likes her or anything, just for charity work, you know? And he leaves it on her doorknob. Akane sees that he does this and steals the watch in a jealous rage because she's in love with Daichi. The next day, Daichi sees Akane wearing the watch, and when he asks about it, she says, oh yeah, Najika gave it to me. She said she didn't need it. So Daichi takes Akane, the notoriously dishonest bully, at her word, and just assumes that Najika hates him, and so now he hates her too. <laughs> so book four begins. Najika sees Daichi and she's like, hey, what dish should I add to the menu at the Fujita diner? He slaps her hand away and says, figure it out yourself. And Daichi also stops going to the Fujita diner. When Najika expresses confusion about this, Akane says, I don't know, I guess he just got tired of playing restaurant with you. Just when Najika is feeling super down in the dumps, surprise, surprise, Sora sent her a gift package. It's full of treats and ingredients from Paris and all these nice little things, including a new watch because Akane called Sora in Paris to tell him that Najika needs a new watch and it would be nice of him to buy that for her. Ah, mastermind. Then of course, Daichi sees Najika wearing a new watch that wasn't his. And when he asks about it, she's like, oh yeah, Sora gave this to me. That was really nice of him, which shocker causes Daichi to have another bitch fit. But then for the first time fucking ever, Someone uses actual direct communication. Najika says, Daichi, if there's something wrong, please tell me, we're friends. Daichi reacts very maturely to this by saying, Friends? No, I don't think of you as a... I don't like how you meddle in my business. It's really annoying. And he stomps off. So Najika is so crushed and she starts crying until... S Sora? When you eat something good, you smile. <gasps> That's what the Flan Prince said all those years ago. That's what I said all those years ago. Because I'm the Flan Prince! Sora explains that when he was little, his mom took him to Hokkaido on a vacation, and there he saved a girl from falling in the river. This causes a huge catharsis for Najika, and she's sobbing, and she's telling Sora everything, and telling him about how that's the whole reason that she came to Saika Academy, is to find the boy who saved her life and thank him. And now finally, all of her dreams are coming true. It's only then that Sora asks, why were you crying when I came out here? What's wrong? And Najika's like, oh, no, it's nothing. It just Daichi got tired of eating at the Fujita diner. I guess I was annoying him. It's really not a big deal. To which Sora replies in a not at all concerning way, leave it to me. Cut to Daichi and Akane studying in his dorm, which is kind of out of nowhere because he hates everyone. He doesn't even like Akane as a friend, but well, I mean, whatever. Sora basically kicks down the door and just lets himself in. Like, hey, nice place you got here. Daichi's pissed. He's like, what the hell do you want? <laughs> Tell me, what horrible thing did you say to Najika? That's none of your business. Get out of my- Sora fucking slams Daichi into the wall, murder in his eyes, fully ready to dog walk him. It's only then that Daichi finally admits that he's upset with Najika because she didn't accept the watch he gave her. Only now does this legion of geniuses begin to put the pieces together. They're like, wait a second, you gave Najika a watch, which she never wore or acknowledged receiving. And then you saw Akane, the notoriously dishonest bully wearing that watch. And that same night, Akane called me and told me to buy Najika a watch Wait a second, 
who's driving the bus? Akane bursts into tears and finally admits that she stole the watch because she's in love with Daichi and she's jealous. She has a full meltdown and runs away crying. Daichi feels terrible because he's been an asshole to Najiko over a misunderstanding. And Sora's like, well, my work here is done. Meanwhile, at the Fujita diner, Najika's hanging out with her one true friend, the middle-aged loser. And she's baking an apple cake. Fujita's like, are you making that for Daichi? And she's like, oh yeah, but I don't know if he'll like it. I'll try some. I'm sorry about this morning. I wasn't feeling well and I took it out on you. You're not annoying. And I'll come to the diner again. I can't get cake this good anywhere else. <laughs> Najika is just glowing, and Daichi is forced to acknowledge what we've all known from the beginning, he has feelings for her. Sometime later, our main goon squad is chilling at the Fujita diner, and Najika's like, Hey Sora, congratulations again on winning that piano contest! And Sora's like, Oh, thank you, speaking of contests! And he hands her a sign-up sheet for the National Western Confectionery Competition. You can win this. Wanna try? Najika's hesitant about this because she's not competitive. She bakes because it makes people happy, not so she can win accolades. But Sora is weirdly insistent on it to the point that Najika thinks she has to enter to make him happy. Suddenly, Daichi's the voice of reason, telling Najika she shouldn't feel pressure to enter the contest and she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to. And then he leaves. He's like, well, my work here is done. Once they're alone, Sora asks, oh, by the way, how come you're not mad at Akane? Why would I be mad at Akane? Uh-oh, she doesn't know. Sora explains the whole watch situation to her and Najika decides she's finally had enough. Najika marches into the cafeteria where Akane is having lunch with all her popular friends and confronts her in front of everyone. Hey Akane, if you got so much money, why do you need to steal shit from me? Then Akane throws her drink at Najika and says, if you need a watch so bad, here, buy one, and throws money at her. I don't think anyone understands just how thrilling this is to me. Like, my heart is racing just talking about this. Euphoria wishes they could have drama this good. Without missing a beat, Najika dumps a full pitcher of water on Akane and goes in for the kill. Why are you always lying and backstabbing? You're an awful person. SHUT UP! These two are rolling on the floor of the cafeteria in front of everyone and finally Akane just screams that the real reason she hates Najika is ever since she came here Daichi's been giving her more attention and she's in love with him. And Akane's friends are like, wait, you have a crush on Daichi? That weird loner black sheep? <laughs> How cringe. Najika pipes up saying, she's not cringe. When you're in love you can't always be dignified. Just then Daichi walks into the circus and is like, what the fuck is happening? In the nurse's office, Najika and Akane have a heart to heart. And Akane actually apologizes for stealing the watch. Finally, the watch saga is over. I can take this fucking thing off. Akane's like, why did you stand up for me after all the awful things I did to you? And Najika's like, cause I know what it's like to have a crush and not be able to control your feelings. In fact, I have a crush on Sora and I'm gonna enter this baking competition because I really want him to like me. Oh, that's interesting. I sure hope no one overheard this conversation. Oh no! Here we get our third epic confrontation in one book. Daichi hunts down Sora, demanding to know what his intentions with this whole baking competition bullshit is. What are you scheming putting Najika in this competition? I know better than anyone that you're a cold-hearted guy. When mom died, you didn't cry one bit. <laughs> oh my god, Daichi, damn! If you're planning on using Najika, that's none of your business. Sure enough, Najika enters the competition. For the first round, all she has to do is submit a good enough recipe. The theme for the recipe is sweets with a friend, which Najika is kind of struggling with because she doesn't have that many friends. So she's chilling with Fujita, trying to brainstorm when suddenly, hello, aren't you open for business? Ah, uh, Akane! Fucking finally, Akane reaches a turning point with her behavior. From this point on, she stops bullying Najika, and the two of them are actually friends. It's kind of adorable. She finally accepts that being popular isn't worth it. It's better to have one friend that really understands you than a bunch of friends that demand that you change who you are. That's not to say that she stops being a bitch after this. She's still a bitch, just not to Najika. This new friendship gives Najika the inspiration she needed for the recipe, and surprise, surprise, she gets in. Najika gleefully runs to Daichi to tell him that she got into the competition, and he's just kind of like, okay. Najika's like, is that all you have to say? You're not gonna congratulate me or anything? You're so dumb. You're happy because you passed the first round? Besides, entering a competition is a stupid way to show your love. Well, at least Sora congratulated me, unlike you. I can congratulate you too. Oh my god! Oh my god, I should stop here. This video is gonna take me a fucking year to edit, but I do not care. We have to go to book five. So book five starts with insert poor communication here and Najika's sad again. Daichi does something that he's never done before and he asks Sora to cheer Najika up because he knows that she likes him more. Sora cheers her up 
by encouraging her to focus on the next round of the competition. The recipe theme for the second round is a dessert that simulates all five senses, and so he takes her to a bunch of fancy bakeries so she can sample all these delicious treats. Later, when Najika is experimenting with recipes, her hand cramps up. What's wrong? Oh, nothing, my hand just cramped. I see. Yes, father? Yes, it's going smoothly as planned. She'll win for sure, she has to. We invited her to the academy for that reason. I don't know if you've noticed, but the sun is fucking up every shot of this video. I am fighting for my life out here. I've glued five pieces of paper to my window and I'm gonna glue more. We get to see a very rare one-on-one -on -one conversation between Daichi and Fujita as they both express that they're concerned for Nujika. Daichi is suspicious of Sora, where Fujita is concerned about her cramping hand. Finally, the big day of the competition arrives and Najika is just starstruck with all the cool equipment and all the celebrity chefs competing. And not even two seconds in, she's getting bullied again. This time by a grown adult. This place isn't for kids. Go do your homework or something. What are you, baby? What well, the baby needs your diaper changed? So the competition starts and Najika's whipping it up when her hand cramps again. Fujita, who I can't believe isn't smoking indoors, says, oh no, this is exactly what I was worried about. Turns out it's a common thing for chefs to develop tendinitis or hand cramps from cooking too much without taking breaks. And that's exactly what's happening to Najika. The judges are skeptical of her technique and she can barely hold her whisk and all hope is lost in until, hey, you, you can't come in here. I just need to go in for a little bit. Daichi? Daichi knows how to bandage a wrist after his years of playing basketball. Not only that, but he does the impossible. He apologizes. Okay, I know this is gonna be a shock for everyone, um, but the judges love her dessert and she makes it to the final round. So the whole gang is overjoyed when suddenly an unfamiliar man walks in. Oh, Najika, let me introduce you to my father, the director of Psyche Academy. Okay, here's where things get weird. Without even saying hello to her, the director gets very emotional and starts talking about how she looks just like her dad and about how he was so close with her parents before they died in an accident and referring to them by their full names, which is so odd because Najika obviously already knows all of this. But someone in the crowd overhears this and is like, wait, she's a daughter of those famous pastry chefs? and pandemonium ensues. Suddenly dozens of people are taking pictures of her and screaming questions about her parents and how she's carrying on their legacy. The next day, Najika is exhausted when she gets swarmed by students asking her all the same questions and saying the same things. Wow, Najika, I didn't know you were famous. And Najika's like, what are you talking about? I'm not famous. And she's so confused until someone hands her a newspaper. She's on the front page. There's basically a tabloid article about her being the daughter of those famous dead chefs. And it's just inspiration porn talking about how she grew up in an orphanage. She overcame so many hardships and now she's carrying on her parents' legacy as they watch from heaven. Najika's just mortified at the way they're talking about her and how they're using her parents' death basically as advertising. She runs to find Sora and talk to him about how we can stop articles like this from being written when she overhears him talking with his dad. Dad, this is too much. What are you saying? This is perfect. A tragic genius' Cinderella story? and there'll be so many reporters at the finals. Anyway, I sure hope no one overheard this conversation. Oh no! Najika's like, Sora, what's going on? Oh, Sora didn't tell you? This has been the plan all along. This is what they've been scheming. This is the only reason they let Najika into Saika Academy in the first place. Their plan was always to enter her in a contest, then use the story of her dead parents' legacy to gain publicity and advertise for the Academy. And once they had turned Najika into a tragic, inspirational hero that everyone could root for, she would become the spokesperson of their new culinary program. This is also the reason why Sora has been giving her so much attention from the beginning. It was his job to make her happy, to keep her at the Academy, to get her into the contest. This is what he's been scheming all along. Sora's like, uh, Najika, it's not what you think, but she's already running away in tears. So Najika goes home and cries herself to sleep. She's distraught. She has so much to think about and reconsider. And then the next morning, she wakes up to Sora's unconscious body outside her front door. Damn it, why can't anything be normal? He gives her a box and he's like, Najika, I stayed up all night making this for you. I'm so sorry. It's not what it looks like. And she finally breaks down and just admits to Sora that she's in love with him. And Sora says, Najika, Jika, I, I want you to focus on the competition. Huh? Huh? Once this is all over, I'll tell you how I feel. But rest assured, you're a very special girl to me. Okay, I've been harboring these feelings since I read this originally at 13 years old. And so I finally get the chance to publicly say this. Um, 
I hate Sora more than Satan him fucking self. And no, I don't care that he's 15 years old. If I ever saw him in the street, I would run his ass over without a second thought. Anyway, later, Akane hosts a little celebration party for Najika getting into the second round. And now that Najika and Akane are actually friends, they have some real girl talk. And Akane's like, hey, Najika, um, it's like, really fucking stupid that you still trust Sora even though you know for a fact that he's using you for financial gain. And Najika's just like, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. And as if the vibes couldn't get worse, oh my god, this clown again. He's like, Najika, we'll be hosting a press conference before the final round. And Sora's like, daddy, stop it. Stop exploiting Najika. <laughs> yeah, good job, Sora, that'll show him. And the director's like, you know, it's funny, uh, that it doesn't even matter if any of you guys want to participate because if Najika doesn't win this competition, we'll just void her scholarship and she won't be able to go to school anymore. Just for the record, this is now the second time that Najika has been put in a position where she either has to bake or be expelled. And this courageous act of Sora standing up to his dad is just the inspiration Najika needed to win this competition. And she decides that her final recipe will be a flan. So the day of the competition arrives, Najika's getting ready and she gets a call from Sora. And by she gets a call from Sora, I mean Sora calls Fujita's cell phone and he gives it to Najika because of course she doesn't have a cell phone. She's the kitchen princess. And Sora's like, hey, I actually found a store that sells real vanilla beans from Madagascar. I can give those to you before the contest and they'll really help you out. Let's meet out front. Oh, the competition's starting soon. I better hurry. Watch out! And yep, Sora's dead. You think I'm joking, don't you? I am telling you this dead seriously. Book five ends with Sora getting hit by a truck. Book six begins with him dying in a hospital. Kitchen fucking princess does what so many other serious adult dramas are too afraid to do, and they kill off one of their main characters midway through the series. There's five more books after this. Like, are you getting it now? Are you finally starting to understand why this is the best series ever made? Kitchen Princess is better than Euphoria, is better than Game of Thrones, Lost, The Sopranos, they can all kick rocks! I'd love to keep going, but uh, I have to stop before I have a heart attack. I'm actually like fucking shaking right now. So I'm just gonna say thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to, don't if you don't. I'll see you next whenever I upload. I love you guys so much. Bye.